Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Alaska Pipeline Service Company, fueling philanthropic programs and dedicated to creating educational and professional opportunities for Alaska Native people. The National Weather Service. Hello again, everyone, and thanks for joining us for this Monday's edition of Alaska Weather on the uh, showtime still uh, 5.30 for, uh, okay, that's gone. Anyway, no watches or advisories out tonight anywhere in the state. Uh, so we'll move on to yesterday's satellite imagery. Uh, showed a pretty good day here across the southeast coast. Uh, actually on up into the interior as well. We did have moisture spreading up and that kept the snow showers going here. Prince William Sound into Valdez back toward Whittier and on down where it was rain. In Kodiak Island and also out west uh, the next system pushing some clouds in toward the western Aleutians there otherwise a break here moving into the Bering Sea and uh, mostly fair clear and cold over the interior especially the Yukon Flats and North Slope that same pattern holding today although uh, moisture coming down out of the Arctic there spreading clouds and a little bit warmer temperatures up there in the lower 20s, some areas of the Arctic coast today. Otherwise, uh, same pattern here, especially over the Yukon Flats areas, uh, well below zero into the afternoon, in some cases the uh, lower to mid minus 20s. Uh, fair here out over Bristol Bay, some clouds up around St. Lawrence Island, and this area moisture pulling westward here, bringing some light snow. Uh, Iliamna northward along the Alaska Range and then some light snow in the lower deck clouds here over the southwest interior. This front uh, pushing eastward bringing some rain into uh, Prince of Wales Island this afternoon with uh, gale force winds occurring all through that area including uh, Dixon Entrance and Clarence Strait. Back to the west here the front driving eastward uh, and some pretty good westerly winds, uh, 50 knot westerly winds out over the western Aleutians there. A lot of snow showers following in behind and uh, about three quarters of an inch of rain fell at Adak uh, today as the front pushed through. That's spreading in just a hundredth of an inch at Unalaska, but likely you'll pick up some more. You can see that moving quite rapidly eastward. And so uh, clouds spreading over the Pergolof Islands, uh, the higher type clouds. On the chart, uh, here's that area of snow, Western Cook Inlet, uh, roughly right around here, southward, across the Iliamna, Port Allsworth, and then cutting across northern Bristol Bay. That moisture not really making it into King Salmon uh, today through most of the day, or at least not up until I last looked at about four o'clock, being blocked by the Aleutian Range, but some light snow extending right up into Norton Sound there across the southwest interior. And then that trough coming down from the north, uh, low pressure over Banks Island, and that trough trailing some areas of light snow, fog, in some cases dense fog, visibility is down to a half, maybe a quarter mile there, mostly along the wet eastern coast there, a little bit better back to the west, and uh, pretty fair light winds over the interior areas, and then the front pushing rain and gale force winds into the panhandle. For tonight, uh, we'll see that uh, front continues inland, so moisture will be spreading northward, mixed precipitation in advance of the front, some areas see snow changing or mixing to rain, and with the warmer air south of the front, probably just rain tonight, and uh, gales diminishing as that front moves in. Otherwise, light wind, south central Alaska, a lot of clear skies, uh, clouds shifting southward here. Still a chance of rain and snow showers, Kodiak Island this evening, and that area of uh, clouds and some light snow northeast Bristol Bay, all the way up uh, into the west central interior, probably not quite making it to the Kobuk Valley, and then uh, more clearing to the west, and the front, uh, again, the low center hanging way back to the west there, so the front weakening as it pushes eastward here, but that'll bring some rain into the, uh, after it passes on Alaska, into the Alaska Peninsula, winds pick up a little bit there, and uh, 
Also in advance of the front over the Bering Sea, storm force westerlies come into the western Aleutians there. Pretty tight gradient with a low just to the north of Shimia. And we'll see tomorrow the uh, whole thing shifts eastward. Starts to pull eastward and weakens a little bit, but still storm warnings out here for the western Aleutians and good gales for the central areas. Otherwise, uh, quite an area of snow showers west of this low center. Mixed conditions off to the east, and then this low center developing. They'll keep a chance of rain or snow showers, Kodiak Island, but the bulk of precipitation staying to the south. Another fair day, uh, sunny skies in the mid to afternoon hours here, south central Alaska. Clear skies, VFR, all of the interior until you get north of the Brooks Range out to the North Slope, and especially the Arctic coast. And this persistent area of clouds and light snow hangs on there from the Seward Peninsula, eastern Norton Sound, down. Uh, say possibly to Kaliganik, but uh, anything that falls, the mountains will be quite light. Otherwise, we've got uh, another trough bringing more showers into the Panhandle, first front moving in and weakening, and the main low center, that one staying off to the south. Looking at uh, Wednesday's forecast, another one swings up. So in the afternoon, probably pushing rain across Dixon entrance to uh, possibly as far north as Klawak, Craig area, definitely Heidelberg and Annette. Uh, dry to the north, just some isolated snow showers possible. And uh, the North Gulf Coast looking pretty good. This shower activity should remain off the coast there. So partly sunny skies in the afternoon, Prince William Sound, uh, possibly uh, Yakutat, back to Whittier, Seward uh, could go either way, maybe a few clouds, and still a chance of a few showers there around Kodiak Island, but nothing significant and northeast winds there. Light winds, fair skies again over the interior, looking for a little more in the way of cloudiness here from roughly the Tanana Valley all the way out to the Arctic coast there. Maybe some flurries, northern Koyukuk Valley around Bettles. Also north slope, same story there. Areas of flurries, mostly cloudy skies. Low clouds and fog in the Arctic coast there for IFR, especially the central and east side. A little bit better to the west. Out in the Bering Sea, really uh, quieting down. Just a few isolated snow showers here, mostly north of the Pribilofs, out in this area. So probably precipitation free for St. Lawrence Island. Winds quite light and out to the west here. Uh, high pressure makes for a pretty good day there for the eastern Aleutians from actually Atka all the way to the Alaska Peninsula. Light winds and possible clearing. And then that next front pushing uh, more gale force winds in, say 40 knot winds with uh, rain into the western Aleutians. Temperatures across the southeast coast this afternoon in the uh, upper 20s to the north here to mid 40s down to the south with 44 at a net, 37 Sitka, 10 degrees cooler at the state capital of 27, 30 Yakutat, 33 in Cordova, Valdez 26, Seward up to 42, 37 there in Whittier, minus 4 at Gulcana while McCarthy was at 7 above, minus 8 Northway. One above zero at Fairbanks in south central Alaska here, uh, roughly from about uh, Palmer Anchorage, mid to upper 20s, lower to upper 30s here as you head down the peninsula there, 37 at Homer. Uh, about 40 in Kodiak today. Farther north, the uh, cold air here really entrenched over the Yukon Valley uh, up in this area here with uh, Beaver at minus 23, Fort Yukon 22 below, and uh, Chalkitsik uh, this morning is around 30 below. There's Anatovic this afternoon at minus 13. And then out along the coast, there are milder temperatures, 19 at Barrow, otherwise five at Newix at minus 10 Umiat, five below at Point Lay, minus two Kivalina, about the same in Kotzebue, five degrees in Nome, otherwise a little below zero through this portion of the state to minus one at McGrath, Bethel up to 10, and out on the coast there, Ammonic, 23 degrees. St. Mary's 14 and St. Michael had 9, Savunga 27, out in the Privilos mid to upper 30s, mid 40s here, 46, Atka appears to be the uh, warm spot in the state, upper 30s for the eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula dropping down to 14 degrees there at King Salmon. And for the lows tonight, uh, single numbers and teens for Bristol Bay. Well below zero again in the interior, especially west and north of the Alaska Range, although Copper River Basin dropping down about 10 below or so. Uh, 20s, lower 30s for the Panhandle. Single numbers of Sitna Valley into the teens to mid-20s here for South Central Alaska Kenai Peninsula. Highs tomorrow, again, uh, much like today, probably some areas here uh, staying 
colder than minus 14. That's probably a little high on these highs up here. Again, teens out along the Arctic coast, cooler over the North Slope. We're looking at uh, 30s and near 40 for the Alaska Peninsula. Same thing for the Aleutians, as well as the Southeast Coast. And flying weather tomorrow morning, a uh, lot of EFR over the interior. Maybe that narrow band here with, those, uh, with the clouds and flurries, Iliamna northward, but that's uh, pretty narrow. VFR all along the North Gulf Coast and offshore. Marginal VFR here is at uh, front spreads of moisture northward across the pan. And it looks like all the IFR will stay in Canada. And then out west, just a narrow band of marginal stuff with that front pushing across the Alaska Peninsula and then across the Pervolos, followed by a lot of VFR. So tomorrow afternoon, suddenly some VFR expands out here over the Bering Sea and extends down to the central Aleutians. A patch of IFR sliding up the Alaska Peninsula. Kodiak VFR. This stuff staying off the coast, except for right around Cape Yakutaga, marginal VFR for most of the Panhandle, IFR again, central eastern Arctic coast. Passes, Anatovic and Avigan, VFR once again, and uh, no change, or Lake Clark and Merrill tomorrow, VFR, and same forecast for rainy. Windy, open, Isabel and Mentasta, pretty good with uh, Tanita, ceilings visibility is unlimited, same for Portage, Chilkoot and White, uh, could start out VFR, some moisture lifting northward, could go marginal and then back to VFR later in the day. Freezing levels at the surface up north of St. Matthew Island, then down south of the Alaska Peninsula across Kodiak Island, North Gulf Coast, on down the coastline, 2,000 feet nudging up to the Alaska Peninsula, also here, Kenai Peninsula area, and then off down across Prince of Wales Island. Taking a look at icing threats, above about 4,000 feet, areas of light rime icing possible here with that uh, moisture down in the southeast coast. And then a pretty narrow band here, just a slight threat, mostly above about 5,000 feet, Alaska Peninsula, maybe a little more extensive area out to the west, otherwise icing free. And the jet stream looking like this, uh, a couple of lows out here over the Bering Sea, so we've got uh, generally a west-northwesterly flow just south of the Aleutians, up to 160 knots, splits right here, a weak branch heading north across western Alaska, up around this uh, high off the uh, Arctic coast there. There's some northerlies kind of uh, coming down, and that's actually helping to spread a much colder air mass, especially aloft into the eastern Arctic coast, maybe even the northeast interior over the next couple of days. Southerly is 120, but it's east of the panhandle. At 9,000 feet, we've got a pretty easterly flow here from the interior right out across the northern Bering Sea, 10 increasing to 25 knots, and then a narrow band here of 25 to 40 knot winds coming back around 60 knots there over the western Aleutians, otherwise 30 knots as you head in toward False Pass, and kind of a variable pattern here along the trough axis. Southeast winds 25 to 35 off the southeast coast, lighter inland light winds over the southeast interior. 3,000 feet, about the same pattern, southeasterly is 25 to 35 and across the Gulf of Alaska, really light, south central Alaska, Copper River Basin, 10 to 15 over the interior, light and variable up there over the northeast, northeast 20 maybe, central Arctic coast, and then these easterlies increase, uh, north of Nunavak Island, 25 to 40 knots, out over St. Matthew Island, westerlies coming into the Privilofs at 20 knots, and uh, picking up a little bit here down toward the Fox Islands with the strongest winds out here over the western Aleutians where those storm warnings are out. And turbulence-wise, that's where you'll find any moderate chop occurring from Attu all the way to Atka tomorrow. Uh, smoother though for the Fox Islands area, Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island, uh, an area below about 4,000 feet here, like to isolate moderate turbulence there from uh, Togiak Bay back up to St. Lawrence Island, smooth for uh, Seward Peninsula, and could be a little bumpy up there over the North Slope and maybe the east western Arctic coast, also just south of the Brooks Range. And uh, this stuff right along the coastline there, nothing serious at all, maybe the North Gulf Coast. And that's about it. So after the break, I'll return with the uh, Ice Edge and the marine forecasts. This is the third year of our project. We're looking at the timing 
of when all the plants start growing in the summer and when all the birds come to this area. The timing of when those things happen is changing with climate change. And so we're looking at the effects of those changes. The relationship with people you work with at a camp like this is really unique. In my everyday life, I don't spend this much time with, with anyone, with a spouse, family members, best friends. This is a really interesting situation where you're basically thrown into the mix with a, essentially a bunch of strangers. It's kind of a really cool way to get to know people because you're pretty stripped down to, 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 to bare minimum. We don't have internet, we don't have phones or anything. And so all of our social interactions are just like face-to-face -face personal interactions. I'm an undergrad exchange student from uh, Sweden. My name is Ryan Choi and I am a PhD student at Utah State University. I'm a, a postdoctoral researcher at University of Alaska Anchorage. I'm an undergraduate researcher and field technician from Utah State University. And I'm a master's student at Utah State University. And I'm here now in the YK Delta to work for the summer. Our field season is about five months long. We have to show up here at the tail end of winter. Everything is totally frozen. All the rivers are frozen over. There's snow everywhere. And it's a very different landscape than uh, it looks like right now. Our day-to-day -day life here, it varies quite a bit, but the one constant is that we make a hearty and sometimes elaborate breakfast. Our downtime is almost entirely dictated by the weather. So if the weather's nasty, we're inside and we can get really creative. If you're looking at your paper and you fold it bottom to top, what might be you could say, hot dog style mm -hmm. in the past life, it's now valley fold. Valley fold, okay. You get valley fold. It feels like I live better out here than I do back home. When I lived in Anchorage, I was totally deprived of sauna for you know, the whole winter. It was like, yeah. And then I come out here and there's this great uh, sauna. I do not take any credit for the construction of this uh, sauna. It's entirely the bird camp who has put up and uh, put up the sauna and made these little niceties. We have the essential oils that you can put on the splash on the stove with water. So this is where you sit and get, uh, get uh, reborn. Remote research camps like this are common in Alaska. And I think part of it is because in other parts of the world or other parts of the country, they'd be on the road system, they'd be easy to get to. But the other thing is that Alaska is unique because it's the only part of our country that is in the Arctic. And so it's really important to get on the ground and, and study these ecosystems. Our Alaskan experience is very different than what most people think of as Alaska. This being my third season out here in the Delta and, and the final year of all of the project as well, um, for me this is a very bittersweet summer. I am looking forward to having my summers back and being able to have more normal life again, but it is sad knowing that this is the last time that we'll be out here like this. Definitely spending a lot of time trying to cherish the last moments, the last saunas, and, uh, last time uh, getting to experience what it's like being out here at Tacoma. Happy birthday, dear Ryan. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> it was pretty f smoky in here. We couldn't really figure out until somebody saw it like, yeah, the floor is on fire. But now we have extra drainage, so. SST chart showing a lot of green here over the Northeast Pacific on up along the North Gulf Coast, uh, around 10 degrees Celsius, which is roughly 50 degrees Fahrenheit, give or take, a little milder down to the south. 
and then cooling off here over the Bering Sea, uh, definitely from what it was, say, a month ago, and uh, even up into the Chukchi Sea, cooling off quite nicely. All blue through here because uh, that's uh, just about ice covered up there. Still some open areas, but uh, about ready to close off. Gradually building here of Kotzebue Sound, ice expanding there on the western coast, and even all the way down now into uh, Cuscoquam Bay and Norton Sound. Chukchi Sea, still a lot of open area up in that region. And for the marine forecast, east winds 30 to 35 knots, gales up along the north coast there. Uh, seas 12 to 14 feet, southeast small craft advisory winds here for the southern coast, southeast 25 Clarence Strait, and then swinging around to the north for uh, Stevens Passage there at 25 knots. Uh, more than likely, you're looking at an east wind in Frederick Sound. And Northern Link Canal gales tomorrow, diminishing in the afternoon. So start out 25 knots or 35 knots, and then maybe drop off to 30 and then 25 late in the day. Outlook for Wednesday, those 25 knot winds hold through Wednesday up there. Northeast 25 now for uh, Stevens Passage. And then southeast kick, picking up to 30 knots for the uh, Clarence Strait area. Same forecast here, southeasterly winds at 30 for the south coast. Seas 13 to 14 feet and 10 to 12 feet up here in the north with a more easterly wind flow. So small craft advisories the entire stretch of the coastline. Uh, Cook Inlet, northern Cook Inlet, light northeast winds tomorrow, uh, two foot seas. Same forecast for Prince William Sound. And then uh, 30 knot easterlies here for the North Gulf Coast turn northeast, drop back to about 25 for the Barren Islands and 20 knots here, Shelikoff Strait and the Kodiak Zone, north 20, Kamishak Bay, and south of the Forelands, northeast 20, seas 5 feet. For uh, Wednesday, that holds uh, north 25 for Kamishak Bay, bring small craft advisories back into Shelikoff Strait and uh, Fairly light winds here on the east side of Kodiak Island. Small craft advisories northeast 30 on up, and then that turns easterly, drops back to about 25 for that Middleton Island zone. For the Alaska Peninsula, we've got uh, west winds on the north side here at 30 knots, southwest on the south side, uh, 12 to 13 foot seas, and southeast 25 here for the uh, area from Castle Cape up towards Sitkanak, Bristol Bay, east 25 knots. Sees at about six feet. And Wednesday uh, shaping up to uh, be a little more northeasterly and lose the small craft advisories for Bristol Bay, northwest 20, but those 12 foot seas uh, keep small craft advisories in for the peninsula, even stronger winds on the south side and northeast 30 knots there, Castle Cape to Sitkanak. The Aleutians, eastern Aleutians tomorrow, pretty westerly wind flow there, 30 to 35 knots, seas 13 to 17 feet, and uh, Gales and storms here for the Adak and Atka area, south of the islands, west 50 knots, 29 foot seas, 50 knot winds extending all the way back out to Shimia with those seas uh, roughly up to 35 feet. And then for Wednesday, the next front comes in, so south 40 knots there for the western Aleutians, 20 foot seas, southeast 30 here off to the east, and 20 to 25 knot winds for the uh, central Aleutians, seas on the Pacific side up to 18 feet, and then northwest winds as you move eastward here, down to 15 knots there north of Unalaska Island, but small craft advisories to the south. Actually, due to those seas, you have small craft advisories there as well. And for the southwest coast, east winds, 30 knots south of Nunavak Island, 35 knots north of the island with heavy freezing spray out here. Uh, northeast 35 for the northern Bering Sea there for St. Matthew Island. Lighter winds for St. Lawrence Island, and then westerly winds uh, increasing up to 30 knots there for the Pribilofs Seas building to 13 feet. Then for Wednesday, light variable winds here for St. Paul and St. George with those seas hanging in there, kind of on the high side for that wind at 12 feet northeast, 15 knots, and that's about it for the southwest coast, all the way up to St. Lawrence Island, 20 knots for the northern Bering Sea. And up along the Arctic coast, uh, east-northeast, pretty light tomorrow, just 10 knots or 5 to 10 knots on the eastern coast. 15 out of the east there for the uh, central coast. And then small craft advisories here from Cape Thompson all the way up to uh, where the zone ends for heavy freezing spray as well in these zones. 5 to 6 foot seas, pretty light easterlies there from Wales to Cape Thompson. And then uh, that stays light here for Wednesday as well, but still really not much change. Heavy freezing spray from uh, 
again, Cape uh, Thompson up here until the winds drop off down the central coast, down to 15 knots out of the northeast, and generally a light northeast breeze there for the eastern coast. Looking at tonight again, we have this front uh, now spreading rain into the uh, Prince of Wales Island area. Uh, mixed precipitation spreads north here into the panhandle. Uh, kind of iffy on how far north that gets, but definitely clouds on the decrease here. They already have here along the North Gulf Coast. Lingering threat of rain and snow showers, Kodiak Island. And uh, clear and chilly here, south central Alaska, right up in the Yukon Flats. Again, lows up there near 30 below tonight. And uh, milder clouds, flurries there along the Arctic coast, especially the east side. And a narrow band of clouds here, maybe some flurries persisting in that area. And the next front pushing eastward here on those strong west winds, weakening though with a main low center hanging back to the west. So look for some uh, precipitation to spread into the Alaska Peninsula, into the eastern Aleutians this evening, then across the Alaska Peninsula, a little bit of a pickup in the winds. Snow showers become more numerous again, along with uh, storm force winds out toward the central Aleutians. And those progress to the central Aleutians again, those westerlies 45 to 50 knots into the Adak Atka area, extending back. Mostly mixed rain and snow showers here along the Aleutians. Mostly snow showers here from this low center from the Pervilofs out to the west. And then back to mix. This low, uh, really, most of the moisture staying off to the south. Fair again over the interior, no change like we've had for several days. Same pattern up on the Arctic coast as well. And uh, Trough brings more showers into the southeast coast here. Back, uh, maybe some mixed stuff, uh, probably staying off the coast though. And then for Wednesday, yet another system spreads uh, rain, nudges some moisture up into the southern panhandle, but nothing heavy. Maybe a few more clouds over northern Alaska, otherwise no change, and then pretty fair out over the Bering Sea. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Support comes from the University of Alaska College Savings Plan, helping you and your child save for college every step of the way, from diapers to diploma. More information at uacollegesavings.com.